Real estate's upside comes from rents and capital gains. It can provide diversification to investor portfolios. It also serves as an inflation hedge as rents and property values tend to increase with inflation. Real estate investments can be classified into several categories according to the type of property and financial instrument used. Most real estate is either residential or commercial property. There are various ways to invest in these property assets, including direct equity ownership, direct debt exposure, such as mortgage or construction loans with residential or commercial property as collateral, or publicly traded equity and debt securities backed by real estate. Let's examine these categories in more detail. Direct investment in residential property can be funded with cash, a mortgage loan, or both. The owner's equity is equal to the property value minus the loan amount. Lenders or issuers hold a direct investment in a whole mortgage loan. They can sell the mortgages they have originated, which can be pooled or securitized. The so-called mortgage-backed securities, or MBS, are an indirect investment in the mortgage loan pool and can be traded publicly. Commercial real estate is defined as property investments generating rental income. It includes investments in office buildings, as well as homes that are rented out. Just like residential property, commercial real estate can be funded by cash, mortgage loans, or both. Commercial property mortgage loans are considered a direct investment. They can be pooled and securitized into commercial mortgage-backed securities, or CMBS, which are an indirect investment that can be traded publicly. Commercial real estate investments can be structured as limited partnerships or real estate investment trusts, REITs for short. As we mentioned earlier, limited partnerships are private vehicles made up of limited partners or investors and general partners who manage the investments. LPs have limited liability to the amount of the initial investment while GPs have unlimited liability. REITs, on the other hand, are publicly listed investment vehicles that issue shares, which are traded like regular company stock. They typically distribute 90% of their income as dividends. REITs can be classified according to the type of commercial property they hold, for example, office buildings, hotels, malls, mortgages, and so on. In addition, timberland and farmland are also considered real estate. The returns of these types of investments depend on the markets for timber, agricultural products, and land. Okay, great! Now, let's look at the three main indexes used to measure real estate market performance. The first one is the so-called appraisal index. An example is the National Council of Real Estate Investment Fiduciaries, or NACREF, property index. As the name suggests, it is based on appraisals or periodic estimates of property values. This kind of index has smoother returns and lower standard deviation compared to the other types. Next, we have the Repeat Sales Index, which is based on price changes of properties that have been sold multiple times. Finally, there are REIT indexes, which are based on trading prices of REIT shares. This approach is similar to equity indexes. REITs tend to have a moderate correlation with equities, which has been around 0.6 historically. Their correlation with bond returns has been very low. These low correlations with stocks and bonds suggest that investors can achieve diversification benefits by including real estate in their portfolios. Still, they need to pay attention to the methods of index construction and consider whether appraisal or repeat sales data is used. Okay, good. What else do we need to look at when doing due diligence on real estate investments? Property prices are driven by a number of factors, including interest rates, local market conditions, regulation, and other macro and microeconomic variables. These factors, of course, bring some uncertainty or risk. As we mentioned earlier, this asset class can support high leverage, and it is commonly used we must keep in mind that leverage amplifies both gains and losses, so this is another source of risk. Another important element determining performance when investing in a real estate fund is the fund manager's ability to select, finance, and manage property investments. And finally, we should pay extra attention when investing in distressed properties and real estate development. 
Distressed properties carry additional risks compared to properties with stable financial and operating track record. Real estate development also entails a greater risk, which is related to regulations such as zoning and permitting, environmental impact considerations, as well as economic and financial environment changes over the development period. For instance, if short-term financing is used for property development, rolling it over may become an issue in case of a changed economic outlook. Okay, great. This is the end of today's video. If you are into educational investment and finance videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks so much for sticking till the end. I'll see you in our next episode.